trucks of the 90s offered more character and excitement than what we have today. Don't get me wrong, the TRX and Raptor are great looking trucks, they boost loads of power and look very fun to drive. However, the 90s had these unique trim levels and options that we just don't see anymore. For example, the S10 Extreme. It's okay if you think it's ugly, but you have to understand that this was offered almost 30 years ago, when small trucks were still a thing and popular. This is just one example I want to share. There's a whole lot more of these unique slash weird trucks that you most definitely forgot about. I will be 100% honest, the trucks on this list don't do much for performance, and I did that on purpose. I want to dedicate an entire video to the performance trucks of the 90s, but I'm only doing this if this video reaches 100 likes. I think that's a very reasonable goal. If you're new here, I upload weekly every Tuesday or Wednesday, and at the end of every video, I make a tier list of all the cars mentioned. This is where things get heated though, as it's 100% opinion based. With all that said, let's jump right into it. Dodge Dakota Convertible. Bruce Benedict, the product planning chief of the Dakota line, thought this. With Chrysler bringing back the convertible passenger car with the K-Body, he thought it would be nice to bring out the first pickup convertible. In his words, a niche product that no one else had to help bring buyers into showrooms to see the rest of the Dakotas. The Dodge Dakota convertible did not last long. Three model years to be exact, 2800 sold in 1989, 900 in 1990, and single digits in 1991. For the first generation Dakota, a more notable and recognized variant would be the Shelby Dakota. Not so much this thing. Sport was the only trim offered with the convertible which came standard with all wheel drive and you could only get the convertible top in the two door regular cab. By getting this unique configuration you got a couple of special features. Exclusive sport styled alloy wheels, vinyl inserts, AM FM stereo, AC, and sport decals. One engine option was available, that being the 3.9 liter V6 that makes 125 horsepower, which has made it into a 5 speed manual or a 4 speed automatic. You could only get this truck in three colors, those being black, red, and white. This package cost an additional $3,000 over the base model Dakota, which in today's money is a little over 7 grand. The brochure that advertised this truck says this it's all truck and more. The sun, the moon, and the stars at night. I don't hate it, but I don't like it. If I was alive when this truck first came out, I would think it's horrific, but I see it as oddly unique in today's world. F-150 in Bronco Night Edition. This exclusive package was offered in 1991 and 1992 only. It's mostly an appearance package, but understand this was before the SVT Lightning. So essentially, this was the jumpstart that Ford needed to reinvent the sport truck. The night package was only offered on XLT Lariats only, I believe the highest trim level offered at the time. Now they have so many more levels, they have XL, XLT, Lariat, King Ranch, Limited, Platinum, and Raptor. It's pretty ridiculous if you ask me. With this night edition, you got some exclusive features. White letter tires, alloy wheels, sport suspension, a gradient blue and purple stripe, which speaks its time period very appropriately, and night graphics on the rear and spare tire cover for the Bronco models. For 1991, you could only get a night configuration for the regular cab. Ford decided that this was too selective, and for 1992, the night was offered in any style you wanted. Style side, flare side, super cab, etc. 1991 only offered four wheel drive, which changed in 92 when you could also get two wheel drive. Around a thousand night Broncos sold and around 2,000 night F 150 sold over the course of two years. Ford designed a special truck for night people. So, of course, sports fans wanted one too. Now, Ford introduces its new flare side for yet another side. Don't these people ever rest? The best ever rest. With a full-size night, sport, and bold new flare side, Ford takes all kinds in style. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. 
Chevy S10 Baja, one of my favorites on this list. We are all familiar with the S10 ZR2 or Blazer ZR2, well before that and the second generation S10, there was the Baja. Definitely less known and talked about and that's for reason. This exclusive package was offered from 1989 until 1991 and they sold just over a thousand units, making this a very rare truck indeed. This was far more than a graphics package. It came with off-road suspension, underbody shields, tow hooks, off-road tires, a lift, roll guard, brush guard, fog lights, and off-road lamps. And on top of all this, it had some pretty awesome graphics. Optional with the S10 Baja was the inclusion of a bed spare tire mount and mesh end gate. Two engine options were available, an inline four making 125 horsepower or the 4.3 V6 making 160. Both were offered in four wheel drive only and like the Dakota convertible, three colors were offered, black, red, and white, which are the same three offered on the Dakota. Ford Ranger Splash. Like the Night Edition previously mentioned, this trim was mainly cosmetic. The Ranger Splash was the first compact truck to offer a flare side bed, or as some people like to call it, the step side bed. Personally, I don't like it all that much. The Ranger Splash was featured on Baywatch, oddly enough. I think partly the reason that is, it's because of the vibrant colors offered. This trim included matching color bumpers, side mirrors, and grille. 4x4 models got exclusive 15-inch aluminum wheels, while two-wheel drive models came with a sports-tuned suspension, stiffer shocks, larger anti-roll bars, and higher rated springs. Three engines were offered, a 2.3, 3.0, and 4.0. If you got the V6, then you got bolstered sport bucket seats as well. Apparently they brought the splash name back for the Ranger in 2022. Now there's a snow, forest, and sand edition. To me, it doesn't offer the same character as it did in the 90s. What do you do after you introduce the first compact flare side on the planet? You make an even bigger splash, announcing the Ford Ranger Splash Super Cab. Now the cool original also comes in a more spacious rendition. The 1994 Ford Ranger Splash and Splash Super Cab. Now how big a splash you make is up to you. F-150 NASCAR Edition. The purpose of this special F-150 was to celebrate 50 years of Ford and NASCAR's partnership. The F-150 NASCAR edition went from concept to production in just 17 weeks, an extremely short time for this sort of thing. This was only offered in 1998 with 3,000 units made, with a $2,500 price increase over base models. And these trucks were mainly available in southeastern regions as NASCAR is big over there. Like all the other trucks, there were some unique features included. It had black paint with NASCAR graphics on the bedsides and tailgate, NASCAR embroidery on the seats and floor mats, a special mesh grill, Goodyear tires with yellow lettering, and a Roush exhaust tip. The F-150 NASCAR edition wasn't where you bought a stock F-150 and sent it over to a different company to get it done. This was a genuine factory release truck from Ford. However, no special engine was offered. It got the standard 4.6 liter V8. On top of that, there was no like special production number, graphics stamped anywhere, which is fine. I guess I was just hoping this truck was a little more powerful than the regular F-150s, being a collab with NASCAR and all. S10 and Blazer Extreme. This special edition of the compact truck replaced the SS models and was offered from 1999 until 2004, with the goal of appealing to a younger audience. You had the choice of getting the package in either a regular or extended cab and regular or flare side bed. The extreme package included a ZQ8 suspension, which lowered it an inch and a half, a very noticeable body kit, unique 16 inch wheels, a genuine performance suspension kit that has thicker sway bars front and rear, Bilstein shocks, and frame bracing. All of this for an extra $2,000 back in 2000. Two engine options were available, the 2.2 four cylinder or the 4.3 Vortec V6, which is a great engine, the V6. I would know this because I used to own a two-door Blazer. She was my first car ever. Something you don't ever forget, really. And either a five-speed manual or four-speed automatic was offered. All right, ready? Dodge Dakota Little Red Express. 
You heard me right, there's a Dakota version. First introduced in the late 70s, the Little Red Express was a monster. It was the fastest American made vehicle from 0 to 100. A version of the Chrysler 360 Police Interceptor V8 was put into this truck. It made 225 horsepower and 290 foot pounds of torque, more power than a Corvette and Trans Am at the time. Over the course of its two year production run, a little over 7,000 units sold. Enter the Dakota Little Red Express. I'll be straightforward, this wasn't produced by Dodge themselves, rather a company by the name of LER Industries. Initially, this company was known for designing conversion vans in the 70s. Well, since those vans dropped off in popularity, they took this opportunity to help modify these trucks. And changes were made. Fenders were now made of fiberglass. The gold script on the back now read Little Red Dakota. There was no longer any wood on the bed, and the vertical stacks were no longer functional. I think that's the biggest disappointment with this version. Although they were nice enough to leave the bottoms open if you'd like to do it yourself. The interior wasn't touched at all, no special seats, embroidery, nothing. In 1990 these trucks were only offered with a V6 that made 125 horsepower. In 1991 they added a V8 that made 170, but still less than the original from years back. Finally, in 92, a 318 Magnum was offered, laying down 230 horses. Some owners claim less than 200 examples were made. No one really knows for sure. What are your thoughts and opinions on that? To me, it just definitely doesn't stack anywhere near the original. It is now time for the tier list. In F tier, we have nothing. In D tier, we have the Dodge Dakota Convertible, F-150 NASCAR, and Dodge Dakota Little Red Express. In C tier, we have the 4 Ranger Splash and S10 Extreme. In B tier, we have the F-150 Night Edition. And in A tier, we have the S10 Baja. Like I said earlier, if this video gets 100 likes, I will do a special video dedicated to 90s performance trucks. There's a good amount of them and it's quite interesting. With that said, thank you so much for making it until the end. Stay tuned for next week for another video. Thank you. I'm good.